Welcome to our In Focus discussion tonight on Utah's freshman legislators. What was it like for some of our state's newest lawmakers to navigate their first year on Capitol Hill, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic? Joining us tonight for a live panel is Representative Nelson Abbott of Orem and Studio and Representative Kara Berkland of Morgan via Zoom. Thank you all for being here tonight. Thank you for having Thank us. You. Representative Abbott, we'll start with you first. What inspired you to run for the Utah House of Representatives? You know, that's a great question. So I raised my family here in Utah, and I love Utah. It's a great place to live, a great place to raise a family. And so I got my uh, life, uh, my career, and my family in a position where I felt, okay, I can take the time I need to really put into this and, and do the research I need and spend the time here. And so. When I found myself in that position, I thought, you know, I need to give back to this great community that's given me so much. And so that's why I did it. Representative Berkland, what about you? What prompted you to run and now serve in the Utah House of Representatives? For about 10 years now, I have been involved in politics uh, in different capacities. And it was motivated by my time as a foster parent. I really wanted to get in and try to fix some of these broken government systems that I felt like we're facing as a country in the state. Representative Abbott, were there any resources, guidance, or advisors provided to you as a first-year legislator? Yes, each uh, legislator is given a mentor who kind of helps us and answers our questions, kind of walks us through the process, and helps us with some of the rules and procedures that are a little bit foreign to us. Uh, mine is uh, Representative Malloy, and he's been a great help, and I've appreciated his advice. Representative Berkla, um, tell us about your experience. Um, do you have a mentor, and if so, who is it, and how have they helped you out in your experience uh, with your first year on Capitol Hill? So I, I have a few. I don't know if I've officially been assigned a mentor, but uh, Representative Lisenby has been a huge help. Representative Gibson has been a great help. Um, Representative Perucci. Those are just a few of the representatives who have just stepped up and made sure I am comfortable and know the routine. Representative Abbott, what's the process like after you get elected? I don't think many of us uh, residents know that process. Do you hit the ground running from there to get bills drafted. How do you prepare for your first year on the Hill? So it's kind of a funny process because you, the election is in November and then from November through December, there's kind of some orientation. There's a few things going on, but mostly you're kind of wondering what's gonna happen. And then January happens and then you just get thrown in and it is a, just a baptism by fire. It is just go, 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 go. Since January 19th, I have been so busy reading bills, trying to understand not only the text of the bills, but what they might mean or uh, how they might impact residents. And so it's been a fascinating process, but just busy, busy, busy. Representative Berkland, how did you prepare for your first year on the Hill? Is it similar as Representative Abbott? Uh, what was your experience like? I came on actually last April during the interim, during a special session. I was appointed by Governor Herbert. So I had a little bit more time than Representative Abbott in getting some legislation crafted and having some special sessions under my belt. But you really do. It's baptism by fire, drinking from a fire hose, however you want to put it. It's a lot of quick work, real intense. Now, you both went through a lot of firsts. The first time being sworn in, your first vote, your first bill, your first floor speech. I'll start with Representative Abbott. Does anything stand out to you that you will probably remember for a long time to come? You know, I will remember for sure the, the friendships. It's amazing the people that are in the legislature and how welcoming they are and how great they've been to work with. And the other thing that I'll remember is the passion that I've heard from so many voters and constituents. Um, each bill that I've run or that I uh, will vote on, uh, I'll have people contact me and really give great insight and kind of uh, give me their opinion and explain why this is important to them and how it might impact them. Representative Berkland, what first will you remember during your first year on the Hill? You know, I, I think uh, my first House resolution when I honored Donovan Mitchell, I will probably always remember that just because it was so fun to wear my official's jersey, to have the speaker up there in a Donovan Mitchell uh, jersey. It was just 
it was a lot of fun and a good way to kind of break the ice there on the house floor. Representative Abbott and Berkland hold those thoughts. We do have to take a quick commercial break, but when we return, we'll resume our panel discussion on your first year on Capitol Hill. Thanks for staying with us for our second In Focus discussion tonight on Utah's freshman legislators. Before the break, Representative Nelson Abbott of Orem and Representative Kara Berkland of Morgan joined us for a live panel discussion on their experiences navigating their first year on Capitol Hill. We pick up right where we left off. I'll start with you, Representative Berkland. What is it like spending 45 days up on Capitol Hill during the legislative session? Is it like running a marathon and are you spending a lot of time away from your family? Absolutely, a, a lot of time away from the family. It's, it's a lot like a marathon, but, but it's a, a good kind of marathon though. I mean, we're around people that, that are so passionate as, as much as we are about issues and to be able to debate things the way that we do, I really actually am enjoying it. Uh, as busy as it is and as long as, and, and as, long and as tiring as the days are, it, it's a great process. I'm really you know, very happy and humbled to be part of it. Uh, a follow-up question for you, Representative Berkland. Uh, we know that you're from Morgan, so some constituents are wondering, do you drive home every night from Salt Lake to Morgan, or are you staying up here in Salt Lake City during those 45 days during the session? I, I drive home every night. It's actually really nice to go home and be with my kids and my husband and talk about their day and kind of just keep things real, keep things just as they really are. I, I also coach basketball and, and I spent the weekend in Richfield um, at the state uh, 3A state basketball championship tournament. So I try to be as much involved in my family's life and day to day life as possible. Do you have time to sleep during the session? <laughs> <laughs> no, not no, at no. all. I think, I think Nelson can attest to that. You get like two, three hours, you're thinking, man, this is really good. <laughs> Representative Abbott, let's turn to you now. 45 days during the session. Uh, does it feel like a marathon to you and are you spending time away from your family? Yes, absolutely. It feels like a marathon. Uh, like I said earlier, it's go, 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 go. Um, I, do, I have been driving home, uh, although I think this week I'll probably stay up here some. And, uh, you know, it is. It's, it's a crazy experience because you'll have meetings starting at 7 a.m and uh, there's just so much policy and so much thinking and understanding and kind of the mental effort I find that I'm putting into it is just really high and so it, it's not just a long day but it's uh, mentally exhausting to try and understand these issues and then try and anticipate you know how things might play out and and trickle through uh, the system and, and so when I get home at night uh, I just want to just sit down and relax and just uh, Take it easy. Well, we're almost at the end of this year's session, and I cannot tell by looking at the both of you that you only get an average of about two to three hours a night. So keep it up. You're on the home stretch. Now, <laughs> Representative Berkland, your first year serving as a state lawmaker is vastly different than everyone else's because of the COVID-19 pandemic. How would you say that impacted that the, the experience that you've had so far? You know, I, I hear stories about what it was like years past, and I've been up to the Capitol to lobby for, for things as a citizen in the past. And it's, it's different from the standpoint that there's not as many people there. The halls are very quiet. You know, I, I don't know any different than what we're experiencing right now. Uh, even as of April last year when I, when I joined the legislature, it was still as it is now. And so I don't, while I don't know any different as a House Representative, I definitely noticed that there's not as much communication coming from the notes that are passed in to just lots of people constantly being at the Capitol. It, it's very calm. And I, I'm not gonna lie, I, I miss seeing so many people at the Capitol, but I also really think the calmness and, and the lack of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of bills that we're running through has made it a lot easier to just really dive deep into each piece of legislation. Representative Abbott, how has COVID-19 maybe impacted the experience that you've had this year at the Capitol? Well, when we started, we had those plastic shields between all of our desks. And, and in all honesty, that made it feel like we were really distant from others uh, in the legislature. And after a few weeks, we took those away and it seemed like that opened up the room and we were you could talk to people in front of you for example representative Berkland sits 
immediately in front of me and so I can speak to her relatively easily during floor time. Um, and like Representative Berkland says, I haven't done this before and so uh, I'll, I'm basing this off of stories. But for example, people will say uh, at the back of the house chambers we have these double doors and normally those are open and there's a loud roar of people and lobbyists out in the hallway uh, talking and trying to get people to come out and talk to them about bills and this year it's just quiet it's it's uh, it's really uh, slow and peaceful in the hallways of the Capitol building. Representative Berkland are you surprised how much work this role has involved has everything been scheduled down to the minute for you? Yeah, it, it really has been there. With the exception of the last week or so, some of our floor time has been cut short or there's just not bills to vote on, um, which again is a great opportunity to just read more of the legislation. I'm not surprised by the amount of work. Um, I love how busy it is. It's nice to just go from one committee meeting to floor time to next committee meeting, but it's, it's busy. Representative Abbott, let's hear from you. Has everything been scheduled down to the minute for you and have you been at all surprised by the workload? Yes, I have been surprised. It is, uh, you know, you go from maybe uh, a Utah County caucus meeting at 7 to a committee meeting at 8 and then floor time at 10 and then you'll have a caucus lunch at noon, more floor time in the afternoon and then maybe another committee meeting in the evening. And so it is very scheduled. You don't have a lot of time to just sit and relax and whenever you do have a few extra minutes I find myself looking at bills and trying to get ahead of the game so that you know my next uh, the next day I'm prepared to go and I, I know what to expect and so it has just been very scheduled very busy. Representative Berkland as a lawmaker you often get endless calls messages requests to meet with constituents other legislators and media such as us now we know that this job is go 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 but have you at all maybe at some point in time felt overwhelmed by that workload no honestly i with six kids at home and a high school basketball coach and i work at a law firm and i've ran a daycare center um i love my family and i miss my kids uh when i'm at the capitol but this is this is been a different change of pace, a nice change of pace, frankly. It's 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 been a lot of fun and, and a really exciting opportunity. I can't say that I've been overwhelmed yet. Representative Abbott, let's hear from you. I know you have a different lifestyle, right? Different mm -hmm. different family dynamic, different work dynamic. Have you at all felt overwhelmed by this workload? You know, so I'm an empty nester, so uh, my typical evening is a lot slower than Representative Berkland's, I'm sure. But the, the part that's been really overwhelming to me in some ways is the number of emails I've gotten. I've gotten hundreds or maybe even probably well over a thousand and maybe a couple thousand emails. And you know, the, the, the thing is, I really want to be responsive to the voters and, and read those. And I appreciate when they tell me not only how they feel about a bill, but why they feel that way about a bill. And so I've tried to keep up on those and I think I've done a, a fairly good job, but responding to those is quite the challenge uh, with that many emails, plus keeping up on all of the other responsibilities. And, and so I've kind of had to learn to triage a little bit. And I, what I've done is look to see, okay, th this is a, one of my constituents, somebody from my district. So I'm really gonna try and pay attention and make sure I respond to that email. And if there's somebody that's not from my district, then I'll look at it and consider it, but uh, maybe not pay as much attention to making sure I get back to them. Don't feel bad. My inbox, the number of unread messages that I have is in the thousands too. So don't feel bad. The email is something that all of us struggle to keep up with. Representative Abbott and Berkland, hold those thoughts. We have to take another quick commercial break, but when we return, we'll resume our panel discussion on your first year on Capitol Hill. Welcome to our third and final In Focus discussion tonight on Utah's freshman legislators. Before the break, Representative Nelson Abbott of Orem and Representative Kara Berkland of Morgan joined us for a live panel discussion on their experiences navigating their first year on Capitol Hill. We pick up right where we left off. Representative Abbott, what pieces of legislation have you had the opportunity to work on this session that are issues that felt most important to you? Yeah, so. Probably the one that's most important to me that, I, that I'm sponsoring is House Bill 155, which is a bill that uh, helps those that, with mental illnesses. And uh, so we have this system in our state where people with a mental illness who are 
uh, suffering really serious symptoms for that, so serious that they become a danger to themselves or others. Uh, there's a court process that they can be put through and then they can receive treatment and help to help them improve their lives and get back in a position where they uh, can return to functioning, full functioning in society. And so what I'm trying to do with this legislation is not only protect the patient rights, but really make sure that they get into the, to the treatment that they need and that they continue in that treatment uh, until they're in a position where they can you know, hold down a job and do those things and really function in society. And so that's super important to me. And I hope that this, uh, it's now sitting on the governor's desk and I hope that it really makes a difference in their lives. Representative Brooklyn, what about you? What, are, what is one piece of legislation that was really important or stood out to you? Well, I, I have a bill that, that is going to committee tomorrow. It deals with foster care. When a child is in foster care and something catastrophic happens to them at the hands of the foster parents, we're talking about like a serious injury of some sort. Um, in a particular case, it's actually a, a child suffered brain damage a serious brain injury and has had, had multiple surgeries. When the biological parents went after the foster parents and sued, they got a settlement. Well, then the state and the Medicaid department came in and took the settlement. The money that was supposed to be used for that child's ongoing lifelong care was then just taken. And so that's something that I feel like we really need to fix in our state, in our system. Um, if we're going to take these kids because we can provide better care than a parent for a while, then we really need to provide better care and make sure we're doing the best by those kids. Two bills that will really work to help protect Utah's children and teens. Representative Berkland, you sponsored one of the session's most controversial bills. What was it like for you to already have so much to handle and then to also deal with the public debate on one of the pieces of legislation during the first year on the Hill for you? A short answer would be it was brutal. Um, the long answer would be it was an incredible learning experience. I think I got probably three worst of uh, legislative years out of that one session just with that bill. So I, I'm grateful for the experience that came with that bill and the opportunity to grow as a legislator and representative um, with community members. Now, Representative Abbott, you have worked with other legislators on their bills. Did anything come through that you learned uh, or supported that you hadn't thought of before? Oh boy, that's a, that's a great question because there's so many of those things that have come through that, uh, you know, that I've worked on and I've helped them with. And, uh, you know, one of the things I've uh, realized is just, uh, or I've learned, I guess is a better word, is just how vast uh, these government programs are and how many people they touch in so many ways. So exam for example, one of the bills we heard this morning in uh, on the floor was uh, Representative, um, uh, let's see, uh, Ballard's bill that dealt with marriage licenses. And it's not something that we probably think about that often or take for granted that much, but she was making some changes to the way marriage licenses are issued and what paperwork somebody needs to bring in to get their marriage license and so there's just so many of these little things that you know I've kind of taken for granted probably and didn't think that much about and now I'm uh, learning more about them in the process and, and why that's so important to people. All right about two minutes left in our final segment. Representative Birklin, what's next for you? What can you share about maybe what you will be working on for the upcoming session? excited about. Um, I'll continue to work on those. I have law enforcement legislation that I, I care a lot about and, and some different issues that deal particularly with rural Utah um, that I'm going to be focusing on. Representative Abbott, what about you? What's next for you? Anything that you can share about the upcoming session for us? Yeah, so I, you know, I plan to do some work over the, the summer with uh, prosecutors and mental health advocates and try and, and further improve the mental health system and especially how those that are mentally ill interact with the criminal justice system and see if we can't make some improvements to help the recidivism rate and also improve the quality of life and while protecting the public. We have enough time for some final thoughts. Representative Berklin, what's your message to our viewers tonight? Maybe some of your constituents that are watching, some that have been wanting to talk to you, but you know, maybe haven't been able to squeeze in because of your busy schedule. What would you like to say to our audience tonight? Well, thank you for the opportunity. I would just love to say, reach out. Um, if we don't get to talk this week, let's talk next week. Let's talk all through intra. 
our job is to represent you and you need to make sure that we're doing a good job of that and so just keep reaching out and make sure your voice is heard and hopefully we can do our best while we're on the hill to represent you Representative Abbott, final words, what would you like to say to our audience tonight? Yes, kind of along the same line, somebody called me today and I answered the phone and they were surprised that it was me on the phone with them. And I guess my message to the people of Utah and my constituents is, we're here, we are accessible, uh, call us, text us, email us, and let us know what's important to you and how you think that the, the government and the system can be improved and, and what we ought to be doing in order to help you improve your life. I think the moral of the story here is be persistent, keep trying, and if your constituents are not hearing from you, it's not because it's personal. It's just you gotta, you gotta just get through at the right timing, uh, just like today, that person who called you, mm -hmm. Representative Abbott, and made it through. All right, you've been hearing from Representative Nelson Abbott of Orem and Representative Kara Birkeland of Morgan. Thank you both for making time to be a part of this live panel discussion tonight. It was great to hear from the both of you. Thank you for having us. It's Thanks. been great being here.